Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and it's been a while since we've checked out the Mono White Life Gain archetype. Last time was before Theros released, and we had a more angel focused build with Bishop of Wings and some of the three mana angels, like Resplendent Angel. Instead, now we've got the more traditional build with a bunch of the Life Gain synergies that you're used to. A Janice Pride made, of course, a big one, a two mana 2 2 Cant Soldier that says whenever we gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on the Pride Mate, and the best combo with Pride Mate is a turn 1 Soul Warden, the 1 mana 1 1 Human Cleric that says whenever another creature enters a battlefield, including the opponent's creatures, we gain 1 life. So turn 1 Soul Warden, turn 2 Pride Mate can get out of hand very quickly. And then Theros also brought a bunch of new cards to the archetype, including Heliot, Suncrowned, the 3 mana 5 5 legendary enchantment creature that's indestructible, but starts out as an enchantment, but then turns into a creature as long as our devotion to white is at least 5, so that counts all the white mana symbols on our permanents, including Heliot. And whenever we gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature or enchantment we control, and then for one and a white, another target creature gains lifelink until end of turn, which also pairs great with the Ajani's Pride Mate. So these are some of the payoffs for gaining a life, and as we'll see in a second, there's no shortage of ways to gain life in this deck. And another card I want to point out is Ranger of Eos, which is great in this deck, as a 4 mana 3 2 human soldier that when it enters a battlefield, lets us search our library for up to 2 creature cards with converted mana cost 1 or less, reveal them and put them into our hand. So Ranger gives the deck a ton of late game power and lets us recover from sweeper effects after going all in, since we are a pretty aggressive low to the ground deck otherwise. So let's take a look at the entire list, starting out with our 1-drops, where we've got the full playset of Alsaid of Life's Bounty, 1-mana 1-1 one one enchantment creature with lifelink, and for 1-mana we can sacrifice it to give target creature or enchantment we control protection from the color of our choice until end of turn, so this can protect our more important creatures like the Ajani Sprite Mate. Then we also have the full playset of Leonin Vanguard, 1-mana one 1-1 one one Cat Soldier. At the beginning of combat on our turn, if we control 3 or more creatures, the Vanguard gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn and we gain 1 life. So another way of passively gaining a life over and over to grow the Pride Mate and trigger Heliot. And then we've got Sarah Ascendant, 1-mana for a 1-1 one one Human Monk with lifelink. And as long as we have 30 or more life, Sarah Ascendant gets plus 5 plus 5 and has flying, so it turns into a 1-mana 6-6 six, six flying lifelink which is quite a bargain, and our deck is pretty good at gaining life, as you've noticed, so getting up to 30 life is not too difficult, and then also makes for a nice target for Ranger of Eos if we're above 30 life. And then of course Soul Warden is a key card in the deck, letting us gain life over and over again whenever a creature enters a battlefield. And then Speaker of the Heavens is a new addition from M21, 1 mana for a 1-1 one, one Human Cleric with Vigilance and Lifelink, and we can tap it to create a 4-4 White Angel Creature Token with Flying, but we can only activate this if we have 27 or more life and only at sorcery speed, but again that's not too difficult in this deck, so makes for another nice target to search up with Ranger of Eos in the more grindy matchups. And then at 2 mana we've got a Janice Pride Mate, which is the key card we want to have on turn 2 every game. And then two copies of Daxos, Blessed by the Sun, which is a weird version of Soul Warden. Doesn't gain life from the opponent's creatures, but gains life whenever we play a creature or a creature we control dies. And then also has a ton of toughness, which helps uh, play defense nicely and provides two devotion for Heliot. And then at 3 mana we've got Heliot Sun Crowned, full playset despite being legendary just because it's so powerful. And then 3 copies of Linden, the Steadfast Queen, the best way to enable Heliot's devotion requirement. She's a 3 mana 3-3 three, three legendary human noble with vigilance, and whenever a white creature we control attacks we gain one life. So that's another way of repeatedly gaining life over and over again to grow the Pride Mate and get a Heliot trigger for each separate creature that's attacking. So that's even better than gaining a life all at once. And then topping off our curve, at 4 mana we've got 3 copies of a Ranger of Eos with all these different 1-drops to search up, and 2 copies of a Jani Strength of the Pride, a 5 Loyalty a Jani Planeswalker, and the plus 1 gains life equal to the number of creatures we control plus the number of Planeswalkers we control, so that can be useful if we need to enable a Sarah Ascendant or a Speaker of the Heavens. Then the minus 2 creates an Ajani's Pride Mate token, essentially, and the 0 ability says if we have at least 15 life more than our starting life total, so 35 or more, then we exile Ajani and each artifact and creature your opponents control, so this can be a nice one-sided board wipe. And then the mana base, 20 basic planes and 4 castle Arden Veil, vale, which can also be useful in the late game. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does.
All right, we're on the draw. Yeah, not an amazing hand, but we'll keep. Maybe get to see Speaker of the Heavens in action. Might see a shock. If they shocked my vanguard, probably means they don't have a chain warlord in hand at least. Which is a card we don't want to face with this deck. Well, if we find land 4, we're in business. I think I make a Pride Mate token and then attack with both. When evil arises, I will be there. A pure soul can inspire others. So I've got a 4 4 Pride Mate token now to hold the fort. Gonna use the mana from Steamkin to kill a Chani. Alright. And they get to pretty much empty their hand here. A risk factor. I'll take the damage. And their last card is another Pyromancer. But now they don't really get to attack. Well, opponent had a decent turn there. Ranger probably gets double Soul Warden to go with Heliods. Just double checking here. Yeah, that makes sense. They currently can't jumpstart the risk factor. Gonna send in some pyromancers. I guess I'll trade. And unleash your hands. Now I could play Heliot first. Is that worth it here? Play Soul Warden and heal it, and then next turn get a bunch of heal it triggers. Nah, I think I'm better off just playing Soul Warden, Soul Warden, Vanguard. And then next turn if I play heal it, if I don't lose any creatures, it's also gonna count as a uh, creature, since we'll have 5 Devotion, which will trigger the Soul Wardens once again. And then uh, we'll be in pretty decent shape. Alright, our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. We're on the play and we've got the dream start of Soul Warden into a Janny Sprite mate, so we'll keep. Could also decide to play Daxos first, so the Pride Mate gets an additional counter when it enters the battlefield. But we can also just play Heliods. Facing a Sultai deck could be a more controlling deck, in which case having Heliod and Ranger is pretty nice. Could be a Field of the Dead deck. Stitcher Supplier, alright, so there are some Graveyard Synergies. I see. Uro, Mild, see Field of the Dead. 
So a field deck with a bit of graveyard synergy. I probably just play Heliod on curve here. And then I'm fine attacking since we'll need to get past the Stitcher Supplier at some points. Maybe another Stitcher Supplier. Speaker of the Heavens. Good Daxos plus Speaker, or I could give Pride Maid Lifelink, which is also tempting. I'll put the counter on the Pride Maids. And then we'll maybe have Heliod on defense. Alternative approach is just to make a 6-6 six -six Heliod attack with a 7-7 seven -seven Pride Maid and a 6-6 six -six Heliod. Could have been bad if they had a Disfigure, maybe. Alright, finality. Just gonna kill a few of our creatures. But we can make it so Uro can't attack, because they might risk dying on the way back. Attacks anyway, so there are 13 facing an 11-11 Pride Mates. But they have a Stitcher Supplier to chump with. Linden's not bad. Turns on Heliods. They have to block the Pride Mates, so might as well grow Heliod here. And then we're at a life total where Speaker of the Heavens can start making angels. And if they have another board wipe, we have Ranger to maybe help. Ranger getting Alsei to give protection could also be a way to get in the last points of damage. But of course, Angel from Speaker also quite useful here. And a 6-6 six, six, Terravor. Second field, alright. So the zombies are assembling. So I can't quite get Alsaid and activate Alsaid. I need to make sure I get up to... 27 life here, so I can activate Speaker. I'm gonna gain two if I attack with Heliod and Pride Mates. 25. Let's play Ranger. And then I could get Vanguard to gain one life right away here. Alongside Alsei to maybe help us close. Play the Vanguard. And then I'll have to 
send in a Linden here. And this way we're at 27, so we can activate the speaker. Kill the Terravore. All right. Another finality would be bad, but otherwise we're in decent shape. I'll jump with the ranger. Wouldn't can escape another Uro here. That way we can stay at a high life total for Speaker of the Heavens. Another Terrafor. So that's a green creature to potentially survive the Alsid giving protection from black. Points at 14. I could attack with a Pride Mage just to gain a ton of life with uh, Heliot's ability here. Keep Heliot back. And then we'll keep up the protection from the Alsates, keep putting counters on Angels. It's gonna field the Ruin the Castle to make some more zombies. So yeah, we're seeing the effectiveness of Speaker of the Heavens against Field of the Dead, giving us an army of angels to fly over, where otherwise we might struggle. Extinction events, oh boy. So the angels and Pride Mate are even, everything else is odd. Alright, opponent chooses odd, does exile their own Uro as well, leaves us with two angels and a Pride Mate. But the angels are the important part here. And down to thirty we go. Play another Heliods. And then I should probably just play defense with the Pride Mates and attack with the Angels.
They did keep the card on top with the scry, so it's got to be a good one. Put the counter from Heliod on the 4 for Angel in case of another find finality. Our opponent is putting up quite a fight, but hopefully we can kill them next turn. This is a showcase of the power of Uro more than anything, and then of course Field of the Dead. Pretty good card too. Alright, let's get in there. Assassin's Trophy, the Angel. Okay. Get a lance. So they're not quite dead. Mending of Dominaria. Mills 2 doesn't get anything back. So even if they gain 3 from Uro, they would be dead to the Angel here. Opponent's gonna be one card short of escaping Uro once again. Maybe they should have activated the Elvish Reclaimer to put an extra land in the graveyard to then be able to escape Uro. But uh, yeah, at long last their opponent explodes. So quite a marathon of a game here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus deck. I've got to turn to Pride Mate, so yeah, I'll keep. And a turn one Stitcher Supplier. Alright, opponent's got some sort of Grixis, a graveyard deck. Now it all say not as good as a Soul Warden would have been in this position, since we might only get one attack with it. Priests. Claim the Firstborn is going to be bad for us, but I think I still play Pride Mate. I could play Alsaid and keep up the protection. And then slowly work our way towards Ranger of Eos. Which can get Soul Warden maybe. Archfiend's Vessel, nice. Croxa in the graveyard too. So some nice graveyard synergies. If they have Call of the Death Dweller in hand, they can make a 5-5 flyer too here. And yeah, there it is. Lazav and Vessel. This is now a Death Touch Menace. And Lazav has good synergy with the Elder Giants. So her hand's not really stacking up all that well against what the opponent's doing. Since we don't have any removal besides Ajani's zero ability, getting rid of a priest is going to be difficult, and priest can be pretty effective against us. So we might see Lazav turn into a Croxa. Yep, so we're taking quite a beating. Mm, 
Menace and Death Touch, so blocking Lazav is going to be quite difficult. So I think we're just dead here. Yeah, not much I can do. A Ranger can get some one drops, but that's just not going to accomplish anything. We're just dead on board. Get some Soul Wardens. Alright, GG's. Cool deck from our opponent. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and uh, we've got a lot of Soul Wardens. This hand is missing a life game payoff like Pride Mater Heliot, but Sarah Ascendant could be its own payoff if we get to 30. I'll keep. I could get in more damage by starting with Vanguard, but we just want to gain as much life as possible, so we'll. Go Soul Warden into double Soul Warden. And uh, lots of triggers will ensue. And our opponent's playing a creature deck. So that's gonna help our Soul Warden. Don't mind trading for the Elf. Now that we got a bunch of triggers, they're unlikely to, so we get one damage. Now if they have a turn two Steel Leaf Champion, they could potentially make it so we don't get to 30 life in time. Azusa. And a Field of Ruin. Alright. Well, Heliod is going to be quite good next turn, but for now we can play a Sarah Ascendant, which is going to be a 6-6 Flying Lifelink. And then we'll have enough devotion for Helio to be a creature to trigger Soul Warden at once. No attacks. Opponent needs like a blast zone here to deal with all these one drops. That would be pretty back breaking. And a Paradise Roots. Alright. A lot of triggers. Let's see, three. Yeah, we'll just spread them out a bit. Opponent takes it, falls to four, and uh, I guess we'll keep spreading them out. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, Soul Warden's a pretty messed up card. On to the next one. We're on the play with an ideal draw, turn on Soul Warden, turn two Pride Mates, and Heliot as another payoff. Let's see what we're up against. Healer's Hawk, alright. So this is looking like a mirror match. Do not wish to trade away the Soul Warden, which is much more valuable than a Healer's Hawk. Alright, opponent's got a very similar start.
So playing Heliot will not trigger Soul Warden, since it's not a creature, as we're only at 3 Devotion. But it can put a lot of counters on my team if the opponent plays creatures next turn, so I think it's still worth it to play Heliod and be more mana efficient. Hit for 4, and then... The next turn the Vanguard will gain some more life. If we find another creature we can play, we can turn Heliod into a creature as well. Daxos. Go to 6 6 Pride Mates. More Soul Wardens are always good. Do I make the largest Pride Mate possible and then just activate Helia to gain life? I think I do. Could also put like one counter on Heliod, maybe. Since they're pretty much in Shumblock mode here. So might as well spread out the counters a little bit. Soul Warden can attack too, since they're forced to chump Pride Mates. Yeah, having Soul Warden, definitely a leg up on the competition here. And being on the play also helps. So how can they come back? Giant Killer is a start. So I can activate Castle Ardenvale, which will trigger Soul Warden twice, which could catch my point off guard. Opponent's gonna take it. Probably better to make a token than it is to activate Heal Lead here. Now, starting next turn, they can use Giant Killer, but it's a pretty big mana investment to keep tapping this down. So I'm still fine pushing damage here. Put them to two. They have to use Giant Killer to tap down Vanguard, and we can start putting counters on a different creature or just go wide. Put them on the 1-1 one -one token now. Yeah, I think the mirror match boils down to whichever player has Soul Warden plus Heliot typically gets out pretty far ahead. So they're not going to use Giant Killer, just plays Linden. Well, maybe I should start putting counters on the Soul Wardens now. They will attack and then gain two. Did not draw a way to enable Heliods. But if I attack with everyone, that can be too bad for me. Again, we've got a Castle to put two counters at instant speed. They can eat one of my creatures with the Pride Mate, but everything else is going to die on their side of the battlefield. I guess they can take the hit from the 2-2 Warden, which only grows up to a 4-4. But we're gonna block with Linden. Oh, I totally spaced out. We could have killed them by pumping the 3-3 the three, three unblocked human. I thought they had chumped it with the Giants. Because, yeah, they were dead on board if we just pumped the human. 
but I don't think it matters here. Stamps down the vanguard. And we can activate castle plus activate Heliots. So there's some nice mana things in this deck. Even if you do flood out. And of course Ranger of Eo is another nice one. Alright, opponent at zero life, we're at 50, slight disparity in life totals. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Warden into Pride Mate is a start dreams are made of. And we've got some decent follow up. Sacred Foundry. Could see a Lightning Strike take out a Pride Mate before it's. Gets out of range. Still just gonna jam Linden. Opponent already down to 12. Deafening Clarion doesn't deal with the Pride Mates. Blotson, okay. Well, they seem kind of dead here. Yeah, Pride made up to an 8 8, attack with everyone, three more triggers, and they're just dead on turn four. Yeah, the Pride made starts can be pretty brutal, so if you don't have removal right away, then uh, you might just be dead. So this Mono White Life Gain deck has been performing quite well for me. I've tried a bunch of different cards in the flex slots. Fighters one was one that I was pretty impressed by, as it helped against sweeper effects, but ended up cutting it to make room for Speaker of the Heavens. Healer's Hawk is a nice evasive one drop that makes it easy to enable your life gain synergies, even if the opponent has a bunch of blockers out there. And then uh, Dawn of Hope can be a nice one-off to maybe draw some additional cards, but I consider it more of a sideboard card for maybe more controlling matchups. Haven't really found room for it in the main deck, as it tends to be a little bit too slow, and Ranger of Eos kind of fills the role of a nice uh, late-game card to provide a bit of card advantage. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.